Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we are going to look at runtime configurations. How can they be shared among developers? It's quite easy when you know how to do it, but um, yeah, but when you don't, then as usual, it's quite difficult. So let us say that uh, I have a Spring Boot application right here, and I have a lot of uh, I, have a, I have a lot of different uh, profile profile groups actually. Uh, one profile group named Deployed Dev right here. So this will activate the, the Deployed Dev profile plus all of the other profiles in this group um, that I've made. Uh, so the same with local, the same with Selenium test, and uh, yeah. These three uh, runtime configurations, um, if I get a new computer or when if we onboard a new person, then of course, or your colleagues, they cannot see these uh, runtime configurations. That's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to, 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 to say. Um, but we can actually store them as product files. There's a feature to do that. And uh, before just choosing, um, before, before selecting the default folder, then just create a real folder, create some folder where you, you know that this is actually IntelliJ runtime configurations. Then you know what this what, what this is about, right? So then we save it there. So, uh, okay, done. And then okay. Let us see what happened now. See now I have this folder right here with some cool XML in it. Um, it's just an XML file. And now you can add it to Git, and then now you can push the code in, in, in your in your normal Git repository, and then your colleagues can then pull that code. And the way they actually import this um, this configuration uh, profile, uh, runtime configuration, is actually by copying it into idea, and then into a folder named runtime configuration. And then, then you have to restart IntelliJ afterwards also. So the, we are going to, yeah, so that, that's actually what we're going to do. So first of all, I could actually just copy this file now. That's actually what I'm going to do. It's a bit faster. Local, like this, add, yes. So we have a local run XML. And then I want to give it another name. This should just be local. And then the actual profile should be uh, auto local, like this. So this is actually what I want to do. So. Uh, and now I want to delete. Let me delete my local profile because I also had one. Um, I had one. Uh, also, let me delete the selenium. Let me press OK now and see. Let us see what happens now. So now I only have one. That is the deployed deal. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, the rest are deleted. So there is some error right there. Okay. But what we're going to do now is that we are going to deploy it there, deploy it there. We are going to, and there's the main class. Yes, that's fine. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, uh, oh, where is the, where is the local file? It just disappeared or what? Let me just, like, local. That's because sometimes um, local, And the value right here, local. It's because sometimes when I open the configuration, then uh, Intel is a little bit too smart. It, it tries to, let me just say, edit configurations right here. So now I have local, which is right there, because I've set up that, that folder as being, um, yeah, as, 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 as containing the runtime configurations. Um, but what we can do for for the sake of my, for my coworkers, they should then, copy these XML files to uh, idea.idea and then runtime configurations, but you should not do that manually, of course. We want to create a, and we want to automate that. We want to help them a bit. And uh, I, I like to actually have package.json files and using npm to run task. You can also have a shell script, of course, that creates that folder and, co and copies the XML files there. Uh, and then you have to restart IntelliJ uh, manually afterwards. Let us try to do that. So, so what we what we do? I'll write npm init. So that is, that is the way that I get my JSON file. So I'm right here, and I'll just press enter. I don't need any of those settings, so I'll just press enter, 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 and then I'll get a package JSON file. It's also used if you um, if you're creating a front end, then you might uh, know that then these uh, package JSON files are actually used. I don't need the repository part, so I'll I'll just keep it actually. But what I need is the script area right here. So this is actually the area that I need. And then I can actually uh, name this something like um, imports uh, runtime configurations like this. 
And then what can I do? Then we can say, um, then we can say first we have to make the directory, make directory, and then we can say inter, and then we can say does that idea, and then runtime configurations like this. And I'll, I'll use this all. That means that uh, it doesn't matter if if this returns um, a non-zero code, then it will still call the next folder. Or should I, I should also, yeah, but I should actually I should actually do this in two steps. So first we make the because sometimes uh, if if you just have started up your if you just got the, all the code, then you would not have the idea folder yet. So we should actually start with this one right here. First, we create the .idea folder if it's not there. Then we create the runtime configurations, and then we copy. Then we copy from uh, IntelliJ runtime configuration configuration like this. Here we copy all of the files, and we copy all of the files into idea runtime configurations, which are right here. Like that, so that is the way to import. It's a. It could have been. It could be easier. Yes, it could be. Idea runtime configurations, and then afterwards we have to restart IntelliJ. So just for fun, just for fun, let us try to create. I'll just create one more. Copy paste. This could be for the production environment. So here we have production, production. Add to Git. Yes, thank you very much. Deployed production. And the name should also be deployed production like this. So okay, so now we have three files right there. So this means that if I write and now no, look, this is why I wanted the JSON file because and the, the the scripts area right here. Now I can just press the little green button right here. Then I can say run import runtime configurations. Cannot create the, the directory because the file exists. Yeah, but that's okay. But that I knew that. That's why I chose to use the or sign. I used two ors. That was an error, I think. Let me just, yeah. So nothing, nothing actually happened right here. So I need to do this. CP copy. I need to use copy like this because I am. Am I running? Which uh, I'm, I should actually be running in. It should be CP. I think copy, CP. Like this, because I'm using uh, git bash actually as my terminal right now. So copy the files. Let us try again. Run. Now both of these directories, that's okay. That's, that's fine. That's why we made the or sign. And then we say, yeah, look, now the files are there. So now we have the XML files there here. Then, I sh then I'll restart IntelliJ. So I'll just stop IntelliJ and I'll start it again. And then I should have those as uh, runtime configurations now. Yes, look, I have them right there. So here they are. That is quite cool, right? I think that's quite awesome. So now we have those, and then I can just, um, yeah, then I can run those. So run the production one, and then let us see what happens. I run the production one, and now I can see that I have four profiles active, deployed production, common, Postgres, and real security. That's quite cool, and that is, of course, because I use the... I'm using uh, profile groups. Uh, if you haven't seen it, then watch my video about profile groups. You can see how to find profile groups right here. I have one that is named deployed production right here. This means that it will it will actually activate this profile right here. It will actually activate common profile. It will activate the Postgres profile and also the real security profile. Use uh, profile groups if you if you if you haven't done it if you haven't tried it before. Try it right now. That that should be the first thing you actually do. The first next thing that you do. Use profile groups in your Spring project. Your colleagues will. Love you for it, and also uh, yeah, create this, these XML files and then uh, commit them and uh, push them to the Git repository, and also help your colleagues by creating a package.json file where you can um, 
where you can, uh, yeah, where you, so you easily can copy those files and then restart until the afterwards. Just a little, uh, yeah, just a small trick and tips right there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much to all of you who comments. Um, it's always amazing to read uh, your comments. And have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.